Hey guys, it's Rick from another book vlog and today I'm coming at you with the first video in a brand new series called Acknowledgements. At the start of every month I'm going to wrangle up some of the most interesting things that have happened in the literary community and present them to you in a neat and tidy package, hopefully. With each story I'll kind of give a quick intro about what's going on, why it might be interesting, and then you can look below underneath this video for a link to that story and you can go check it out if it's interesting to you. First up we have just a historic story from about two weeks ago and I hope you've heard about it if you haven't. Um, N.K. Jemisin, unbelievable writer, she just won her third consecutive Hugo Award for Best Science Fiction Novel. Now not only is it amazing that she won her third consecutive Hugo, which I'm not sure if that's ever been done before, but perhaps more importantly, N.K. Jemisin is one, a woman, and two, she's a person of color. She won for a novel called The Stone Sky, which is the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This was an important moment in literature, full stop. Next up, we have a story about a subscription box for a YA fantasy novel that came with, um, we'll say some unexpected perks. This particular subscription box was called the Book Boyfriend Box, which is supposed to bring items inspired by your favorite bookish boyfriends and girlfriends. And um, it had a um, piece of soap shaped like a dick. Like exactly like a dick. I'm not talking dick-like. It looks like a dildo. Like 100% this thing looks like a dildo. As you might expect, mothers all over America were freaking out over this um, and it got really really funny on Twitter and I'm that's all I'm gonna say about it click the link below if you want to see more um, soap dicks I guess next up we have an article from off the shelf which brings us the five best books that can help you decompress not only does this list have two books that I really enjoyed which were why Buddhism is true and big magic surprisingly from Elizabeth Gilbert. Don't laugh, that's actually a really, really good book. It also has something that I think sounds really interesting, a book called The Courage to be Disliked, which is a huge problem for me. I'm the type of person, I'm like, I hate anyone disliking me in any way, and that, that can make me such a pushover in the stupidest circumstances. So The Courage to be Disliked sounds like a really, really important book for me, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. Um, and if you're having some issues kind of calming down or kind of centering yourself, this, uh, this article is gonna do wonders for you. Next up, we have probably my favorite story from this whole video, because Tim Van Patten, the guy who directed the very first um, Game of Thrones episode, I think he directed the first two actually, he is adapting for FX Shogun. This novel is freaking amazing, and they're making a TV series out of it, and I'm so, so friggin' excited! Ah, it's gonna be so good. Speaking of soap that's shaped like dicks, if uh, if size matters to you, there's a story about the biggest, most chaotic bookstore I've ever seen in my entire life. It almost gives me a heart attack looking at this thing. There are, I think, there's over two million books in this bookstore. So many that if you piled them one after another, they would stretch 310 miles. Imagine what this place looks like. It's like a heap of books. It's like, it gives me, I'm like nauseated even looking at it. So if you want, if you want to, some weird photos, go check it out. Next, we have a story from the Washington Post. I don't know if you saw it a couple weeks ago. Barack Obama came out and he wrote a little bit about um, the best books that he's read this summer. Some of them you've heard of, some of you probably not heard of. Really interesting list. If you like Obama, um, give it a look. You might find something you like. Now that it is September, that means two things. One, summer is almost over and that sucks, but two, it is almost fall, which means we're getting a whole slew of most anticipated books of the fall lists, which are, it's one of my favorite times of the year. I get so freaking giddy when these things come out. So I have two for you down below. One is from Publishers Weekly, which is always a pretty decent list. And the second one is from The Millions, which is actually probably my favorite one every year. Um, this year's does not disappoint. It looks like it's going to be another good one. Um, so go check that out if you're looking for some books to buy. Or, you know, get from the library, whatever you do. Next we have um, a really 
potentially interesting concept, but could be really terrible and weird. We'll see how it goes. It's an article on uh, electricliterature.com about a company that's trying to make the reading experience feel a little bit more like episodic television. It's about a subscription service called the Serial Box, S-E-R-I-A-L box, not like the food. Um, and it works like this. The books are released in serial seasons like a TV show uh, and written by a team of writers like a TV show rather than one writer pumping out a book every five, six years like George R. R. Martin. Fuck you, George R. R. Martin. Each serial season is written in episodes which you could buy individually if you want or you can buy them all together as a season. Each book consists of episodes written by a number of different people and each one of these writers apparently contributes about 30,000 words to the season, which is the novel at the, at the end. So once the season is finished, the, the episodes are bound and then distributed like a novel eventually. It sounds super weird. I don't know if it's necessary. The goal is to, to provide people with a little bit of reading that they can do on their daily commute kind of thing. Um, I don't know how applicable it is to people like you, who are watching on booktube, who probably uh, reads constantly and doesn't have a problem with big books or short books or need... I don't think you need a way to like revitalize uh, reading. You probably have a pretty good handle on it. So if it's interesting, check it out. If not, who cares? Sticking with electricliterature.com, they, <laughs> they posted an article of the, um, the 11 best literary sex scenes and it is worth it just for, there's a sentence that's written by Jonathan Franz in which, that I want to say to you, but I'm not going to because I want you to click the link and go and find it for yourself. It is one of the single worst <laughs> lines from a sex scene I've ever heard. Um, but apparently they collect the 11 best scenes that you can, you can read, but um, this one alone is cringeworthy and please click it. It's ridiculous. Next will be a link not to another article but to a movie on Netflix. It is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which is an incredibly difficult title to say, um, but a really easy movie to watch. I watched this last week with my wife and we both loved it. It's so good. Whether you read the book that it's based on or not, uh, I would still, still suggest giving it a watch. It's really, really good. Also, if you uh, live in a city that happens to be showing the movie The Bookshop, it's a very small distribution, so you might not be able to see it. If you can, I suggest you certainly go and do that. I watched it last night. Such a, like, a lovely film, and just, if you're a person who just, if, if you take a, if you pick up books and you just, like, smell them because you're just that type of weirdo, watch this movie. It's It's set in a bookshop in the 1950s ish I think and it's about a woman trying to open a bookshop in a in a uh, town that does not want one aesthetically it's just a book lovers dream movie you just it feels like you can smell the books through the screen you can reach out and touch them all it's just oh I just I loved it whether you like the story or not I don't even think that matters the amount of just like book porn in this video in this movie it's just it's worth it it's so good. Next we have a story at the New York Times by Sloane Crosby of the Clasp fame. She uh, she wrote a story on shelflessness. Very clever. Where she lives, she does not have bookshelves. So the, the article is about creative ways that she's made space in her home for all the books that she owns without having dedicated bookshelves. So if you're someone who lives in a small apartment or or you had to throw out bookshelves, or you, you can't afford new bookshelves. There's lots of different ways that you might be able to arrange your books that uh, that you didn't think of. So um, if you're interested in checking that out, please do. It's kind of cool. This next one was a really big one for me. It's an article on popsugar.com that uh, profiles 25 mysteries or thrillers that are less than 200 pages. So um, if you'd like a really quick book to read, this is a great resource. And finally, another great historic story happened a couple of weeks ago. Writer Marjorie Liu became the first woman to ever win Best Writer at the Eisners, which is basically the Oscars for comic books. 
The only downside, of course this happened, is that she had to share the award with a man, Tom King. Um, that sucks, I w really, really wish that they could have just given her this award, it's a pretty historic moment, but the only silver lining is that Tom King's Batman run is, uh, it's pretty incredible, but come on guys, just, just give it to her. This is more important than that. Tom King will win tons of stuff in his career, he doesn't need this one. So there you go, those are your acknowledgements for September. I'll be back at the start of October with uh, a whole new group of headlines. Until then, enjoy whatever you're reading. Have a good one.